believe we've reached the end of year A of the church calendar. Next Sunday will be the first Sunday of Advent and we'll move on to year B in the lectionary. We've worked our way from the Sermon on the Mount at the beginning of Matthew through to the last parable of Jesus' public ministry. Fittingly, it is a parable about what to expect at the last judgment when the Son of Man, that's Jesus, comes in his glory. In the parable of the sheep and the goats, we have a tale of opposites. The righteous sheep are blessed. The goats are cursed. The blessed receive the inheritance of a kingdom prepared for them. The cursed receive eternal fire prepared not for them, but for the devil and his demons. In the closing verse, these fates are described as eternal punishment versus eternal life. While it may be pushing the meaning too hard to take this literally, since these descriptions take place within the oratorical format of a parable, we see a dichotomy that persists from one end of, one end of the Bible to the other. It comes into clear focus in the New Testament. Connection with God through Christ is life-giving. Separation from God through callous disregard for the needs of others is death. This death is frequently described as being cut off and thrown into the fire. Like a branch pruned from a vine is thrown into a brush fire. Both this life and this death are eternal, spanning our temporal experience here on earth, but then extending into an eternal afterlife, either connected to or disconnected from God, either living or perishing. There are a couple of points I would pull out of Jesus' parable. One, in God's eyes, what is good is helping those in need, showing mercy to, for example, those who are hungry, thirsty, needing clothes, without shelter, or sick and in prison. Evil is the callous disregard for those in the world who are less fortunate. The second point is, the whether we show mercy or don't show mercy is something God takes very personally. Whatever we did or did not do for, quote, the least of these, Jesus says we did or did not do for him personally. Eternal life, that is, a life connected to God, the life source, is a life of showing mercy to those in need by taking action to meet their needs. Now, as I was walking this past Monday, I thought about how in our giving we can sometimes become condescending or even worse, judging. Conversely, in our receiving, we can feel diminished of less value than those who are providing us with what we need. Maybe that's why some of us are too proud to accept the help we need. But then I imagine the life of an older woman perhaps in her 50s. She had been through a painful divorce as a young mother and raised her children to the best of her ability. Both kids had been successful, but both had made the decision to distance themselves from their mother, whom they judged to not be worthy of their time or attention, let alone love and appreciation. Yet, she always took every opportunity to be one of the sheep in our parable, one of the sheep who fed the hungry, clothed the naked, and gave shelter to the displaced or homeless. She volunteered one day each week at the food pantry, another at a service that provides tweens and teens with emergency clothing needs, and, until recently, she worked doing carpentry on Habitat for Humanity projects. One Thanksgiving, she took on the task of passing, passing out a full Thanksgiving meal to families in need on behalf of her church. After all, she had no family that wished to be with her for the holiday. Another man, closing in on 70 years old, walked in wearing his dirty clothes and shouldering a backpack with all of his earthly belongings. The drugs to which he had become addicted in Vietnam and the trauma of the war had robbed him of the tools to make a home for himself. When he saw Our Lady at the table passing out the meals, his dejected face shifted to a big but nearly toothless smile that lit up his face. 
His eyes shone with joy. Ruthie, he shouted, startling some of the other volunteers. I should have known you'd be in here helping people. That's just the kind of gal you are. He had recognized her from his many trips to the food pantry. He liked Ruthie. He never, she never talked down to him and would take time to hear how he was faring. He took his plate and turned to walk away to his table. Albert, she said, with a gentle southern lilt. He turned to listen. Those were the first words of appreciation I've heard in years. You just made my thanksgiving. And tears began to fill her eyes. Whatever we have and whatever we lack, in Christ, we have the power to show mercy to someone in some way. And that is how we pull back the curtain and let the light of the kingdom of God shine into our, our world. That is how God reigns.